What is up, Tang Gang? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to cover finding a research opportunity. Uh, whether you're looking to apply to medical school in the future, or you're interested in academia, or you just want to try out research, I hope this video is helpful to you. I'm currently working in two labs at UT Austin, one of which looks at uh, depression and isolation in elderly individuals, the other of which looks at the demographics of people with disabilities in the US. And so I wanted to share some of the steps that I took in finding these research opportunities and applying to them. The first step that I took was to use my resources and just understand what research opportunities existed. I went on Google and I looked up UT Austin, memory and music research, because that was something I was interested in. Uh, something else you can do is ask your friends or your professors uh, what research they've previously done and see if any of that intrigues you. Also, UT Austin has a specific site called Eureka, which lists all of our professors who are doing research and are interested in bringing undergrads on board. So if you have an equivalent to this website at your own, own university, I heavily encourage you to try it out. My second step after you've done your kind of preliminary research and seen uh, what is out there is to do your due diligence and understand the research of the lab teams that you're interested in. So once you've narrowed down like several labs that you think are pretty interesting, go on their websites, look through their previous papers, try to understand what they're actually researching. That way you have an actual reason of contacting the PI because you're interested in contributing to their work in the overlap of music and memory, for example. The third step, or this is more of a tip, is to be honest with yourself in evaluating what research you're interested in. Don't join a lab just because your friends are in it or because the PI is super prestigious. Uh, try to find a lab in which the work is generally appealing to you, uh, such that you feel like you would be able to be uh, truly invested in the actual work. So once you've found some labs that you're honestly interested in, uh, the next step is to contact the PI. And you can do this in a number of different ways, but uh, now that we're in COVID, uh, the pandemic, the easiest way, the most practical way is through email. So cold email these professors, um, say, this is why I'm interested in your research, and let them know what previous experience you've had, whether that's coding, or um, making Excel sheets, or if you've done pre uh, previous research, let them know uh, and say why you think that's valuable. So personally, I also wrote several cover letters uh, for the research labs that I was super interested in, uh, just to show that I was willing to put in that work and to show that I was really interested in the work that they were doing. So once you've contacted your PIs, you might get invited to have a virtual conference with them um, and during this conference, you should know, you should keep in mind that they're interviewing you, um, but you're also interviewing them. So you need to gauge your interest and willingness to contribute, you know, whatever it is, six hours or 10 hours of your week to their research. This is again where you should be honest with yourself, because if you can't see yourself investing the time that is necessary to make uh, a meaningful con contribution to the research, then you honestly shouldn't sign up for it in the first place. And if you don't hear back from the people you've contacted, then send the PIs uh, a follow-up. Um, and you can, you can literally say, I understand that you're busy, so if you don't email me back in several days, I will call your office. Um, and that's totally acceptable. Uh, these PIs are busy people, and you saying that you'll contact them shows that you're that much more interested in the work. I hope this video was helpful for you guys who are interested in joining research. One last thing I want to add is that it is really hard to find research opportunities in this current uh, world state, uh, this pandemic, but some labs are easier to find and to join than others. I should note that a lot of wet labs, like um, biology labs that require like pipetting and uh, testing in person, are probably closed or restricted to students at this moment, but some of the psychology or computational labs remain open because they can continue working virtually. So if you're interested in joining lab, you know, this semester or pretty soon, uh, I would look into some of those more virtual labs that are still available. 
Thank you guys for checking out this video. Let me know in the comments if you've done research in the past, and if you have, what did you research? If you haven't, let me know what you would like to research, if, if anything. Uh, keep taking care, keep staying productive, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.